Veronica, it's so good to be with you again. Um, it's it's rare when I get the pleasure of having a uh, repeat performance on this show. So I'm really glad to uh, welcome back National ATU Manager of the Year, Radhika Shukla, to be on uh, the Salesman on Fire podcast. And you know, we wanted to dive in. I think last time we talked, we uncovered a lot of really important things about creating your team, setting the tone, building that culture, and really empowering and enabling your team. And these things are such important topics that I really wanted to sit in on a few of these and, and just lean in to really understand how you do these things, because it's very intentional and very focused. So let's start at the beginning of this. And I think it's really the role of a manager and the role of a manager in making a difference. I think a lot of times sales managers are the unsung heroes. You know, there's a lot of times where, um, you know, you're a conduit of information coming from above and you're also getting a lot of the feedback from your team. But what you do with that is the great responsibility. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on the role of a manager and how you as a manager set the tone for making a difference. Thank you. Thank you for having me back. Um, I always love to share insights um, and perspectives with you, Carson. So first of all, on that note of the National ATU Sales Manager of the Year, that was completely my team. They they make me look good. They are the real heroes. And um, my job as a manager, as a leader, is just to make a difference and give them that platform to shine and do their work effectively. And I think the three key things uh, that I focus on, and I have learned that from my mentors as well, is creating clarity, keeping it simple. Because as you just said, there is overwhelming amount of information. So how do you help cut out the noise and motivate and energize your team, help them collaborate extensively? That's number one and extremely important to energize your team and so that they can deliver results. Supporting and empowering the team so that they are able to solve customer business problems. They're able to collaborate with our partners that help us scale. How do you lead by example and help them build a learn it all mindset? That's very important. And thirdly, recognizing and appreciating desired behaviors around growth mindset, inclusivity, embodying our values, beliefs, living and breathing our culture so that um, it cascades down to the field. As a manager, oftentimes I ask myself, how am I optimizing team performance? Um, do I possibly have any blind spots that may be impeding business success? Am I creating a team stronger than what I inherited? Can my team scale their capabilities ahead of business requirements? Do they have all the resources, all the uh, tools to do their job effectively? And team empowerment actually plays a very critical role in making all of us successful. Brilliant. Brilliantly said. Um, you know, you said something really important at the beginning, you know, just about your team being the real heroes. And I think that's extremely powerful. In fact, I think when someone is able to lead, when they have that that epiphany that they are no longer the hero, uh, they're the hero maker. How can they put a team in place and empower and enable that team to be successful? And you, you hit on a lot of these things, you know, the clarity element. Um, I'm a big believer in being very transparent and communicative with my team. I think it's important that they understand these are the priorities, these are why. Whether we agree or disagree, you know, we're paid to be evangelists of, you know, whatever organizations we serve. And so I think that's important. We bring them on the journey with us. Um, when last we did this, uh, you know, you really dove into your definition of one of the Microsoft mantras, which is model, coach, care. And I think that's really important to understand. I always ask myself, how am I doing that with each of the activities that that I do, whether it's something that's very focused with a teammate or, uh, you know, a team meeting or a team, anything in a team setting. We as leaders, we remove barriers to success. We help our team see around corners based on our experience. And we put them in the position to win. Um, it's not about swooping in and doing for them. It's about making sure that they feel comfortable and empowered to do what they need to do. And that's really the next thing I want to talk about is that empowerment element. Um, I think it's so important to foster uh, collaboration with your team, you know, get them sharing best practices and to feel empowered to do their best work, make sure that they know the resources that are available, encourage them to explore 
um, relationships, whether it's mentors, colleague mentors, aspirational mentors. I think it's key for managers to make an environment that's conducive to their success, which to me is empowerment. What are your thoughts around empowerment? How do you define it? How do you think about empowering your team? Absolutely. You, you've you actually um, nailed some critical elements here uh, in making all of us successful. It's not important to have a team of yes men around you. It's important to have a room full of people who are smarter than you, who challenge your mindset every step of the way. And that's how we all can grow together. And the key there is empowerment. Empowerment for me is having the information, resources, and the autonomy to take initiative, make decisions, act in the best interest of our people, our customers, our company, right? And once you empower your people, that's when you can hold them accountable. And accountability is delivering on your commitments, spoken and unspoken, right? Taking responsibility for your actions and for the impact you can have on the business. So four key elements when we look at empowerment, I think one is very tactical, providing them the tools and the resources, um, ensuring they have the right coverage uh, for their customers. They're being able to do their job effectively and then making sure that we nurture high caliber talent, you know, enabling them, um, making sure they're capable to do their job. And then also being able to do some nimble resource allocation, simplifying orchestration, uh, maybe using data driven systems and tools, processes wherever possible. But just simplification is key so that uh, the daily job becomes a delight to do. Um, and then, you know, most importantly is culture. I think how do we as leaders set the right tone for culture, create a thriving environment, not just an environment where people come and enjoy doing their work, but they want to keep coming back. How do we embody Microsoft values and culture, bring those to life and develop a strong environment where people, you know, they want to get out of bed every day and come to work. I, I say that about myself. I don't like Fridays so much. I love Mondays when I can get back to work and work for Microsoft, right? Culture is the number one reason why I am here. So I think um, empowerment is very important in helping your team build that psychologically safe environment, uh, instilling a sense of purpose and creating clarity by communicating consistent messaging around culture and expectations. I love that so much. And I, it harks back to when I started out in leadership, you know, I think because I was so business focused and I really didn't have a lot of early uh, training, you know, this was, you know, a long time ago at a prior organization, I was very business focused. I would jump right into the business dialogue and the metrics and the numbers. And one of the things that, you know, one of my leaders here uh, really instilled in me years ago was the value of just really getting to know and understand your people on a deeper level. Um, you know, we have a chat this week going uh, that it's just really around gratitude uh, within our team chat. It's our extended team. So there's 60 plus people in that, right? Everybody that kind of touches our, um, you know, our shared customers and, you know, just some of the things that people are sharing and the things that they're saying, it, it, it embodies what you said, Radhika, which is about, you know, creating a place people want to come to work creating a place where people feel a closer kinship than just colleague. And I think those things are so important. Um, the other element around empowering your team is really just understanding their why, understanding their unique yes. superpowers. How can I amplify that superpower that somebody on my team has? I remember when I got into a new leadership role um, here a few years back, I had gotten to that level because of the brand I had built in my prior role. But what got me there wasn't going to get me success in this role. It wasn't going to get me to the next level. I needed to be able to build and empower a team that was able to do it their way, but I was able to complement it with what I brought to the table. Building a team of you know people that are competent and confident and are able to execute, that's the real art um, of that. And, you know, knowing your why, develop, developing a plan, understanding what matters to them, working with them to really proactively get them where they want to go, whether it's getting them promoted so that everybody looks at your team and says, hey, I want to work for Radhika because she gets her team promoted or yes. she gets her team recognized. 
or whatever yes. it is. These things are so important. I loved how you hit on that and the importance of uh, impacting culture in the workplace. Um, anything else on the culture front that you would want to highlight? It's such an important topic, and I think you've certainly articulated some of the ways that you can put these things in place as you empower your team. But I'd love to talk about anything else that you see that impacts culture in the workplace. Absolutely. I think as leaders, it is our responsibility to embed and transmit the culture. Some values that, you know, we've always heard that uh, Microsoft stands by respect, integrity, inclusivity, accountability. How are we living and breathing those values and showing it to our teams? How is it done? The pos a positive work culture doesn't just happen, Carson. I think it takes a lot of thoughtfulness and careful cultivation. And the way your leaders communicate, interact with employees, what they communicate, how they emphasize um, the key critical priorities, how they create clarity, their vision for the future, what they celebrate. You just talked about appreciating desired behaviors, what they expect, setting the right expectations, the stories they tell, how they make decisions, the extent to which they can be trusted and how they build trust. I think all of that um, reinforces culture and we need to um, bring the cultural as attributes, our leadership principles to life with our words and actions. We need to act with integrity, act ethically always and be accountable, take responsibility for our business, for our actions and deliver on our commitments. I think all of that ties into building a thriving culture where people feel that they belong here. That's how you build a sense of community and they want to come back and work for you. They, I think culture is the number one reason why people don't leave companies. That is the number one reason why we have high retention at uh, Microsoft. You're so right, Radhika. And, and you said a lot of words there that are important words like culture and like inclusion and like accountability. And these are words that in in the case of building a culture, we can't pay lip service to. And I think that's the difference maker, right? We can't just make these things buzzwords. We have to really, truly live and breathe them through, like you said, our actions. And so that's the key thing. Culture is intentional, but it's also constantly evolving. You know, we as leaders, we set the tone for these things. You know, we're intentional in how we include people, how we understand what motivates them and what matters to them, how we foster collaboration amongst the team. I remember in, in many roles that I've had in my career, I've put together betterment committees and I've encouraged team members to do players only calls without me, where they're able to talk, whether that's to complain or gel or bond or whatever it is, they need time to spend time as a core unit so that they know each other, they build that foundation of trust and transparency with each other. And I can do, the only thing that I did was encourage it to happen. Yes. But it goes such a long way in creating some of those relationships. That's where a lot of this culture is born, is the team making the conscious decision to gel. And then me as a leader, encouraging that. In addition to that, you know, really digging in and understanding each member of your team. What is their why? What is their unique differentiator or their superpower? How can we help them maximize their impact, not only yes. for themselves and their day to day, but also across uh, their team, their business, their organization? These are the things that really will fuel their brand and ultimately yes. take them wherever they want to go. You kind of hit on this earlier, and it's all about relationships and resources. How can we leverage the resources at our disposal? And how can we best, what are the right relationships? How can we create them and nurture them? And these things all beget strong, winning culture. When we are transparent, we're communicative with one another, we share best practices, we don't hoard them to ourselves, yes. uh, we, we show up to serve. And these things really establish and maintain a thriving culture. Um, but I loved something else you said earlier around superpowers. And I know you and I have talked about this before. Um, branding is so important. And you and I both have had a lot of experience, albeit, and I don't think either one of us like feel like it's always a work in progress, right? It's always something that we're continually trying to continue building with the with the motivating factor of how can I build relationships or create new relationships um, based on you know what I feel like I bring to the table and, and vice versa? And so 
it's ironically or maybe not ironically, you and I uh, actually connected because I was watching some of the things that you were doing from afar, uh, you know, creating content and, and doing motivational things. And then uh, you and I struck up a conversation and, and now a friendship, which has been really amazing. Um, but, you know, I think I know some of your uh, superpowers, but I'd love to dive in more on what do you think is the importance, Radhika, of, of identifying your superpowers and what would you say are yours? So that's a great question. And um, I, this is something very close to my heart. I think what I have realized it my biggest superpower is that I'm extremely passionate about the things I care about. And, I'm, and I put my heart and soul into everything I do. Uh, passion fuels my purpose. I think like, like you just said, everybody has a superpower and that should define their purpose. Coupled with high energy, dedication, empathy that I bring into the equation. This superpower has actually helped me in all facets of life, be it people development, be it leading with care, be it my own mantra of leadership, inspire, empower, appreciate, uh, give back to the community, or even pageantry that I've done over the past four years. Uh, it, it has really helped me um, just take on challenges, not be afraid of um, failures. I think I uh, it's, a, it's one great force that has unleashed creativity because when you're passionate about something you're willing to take risks yeah. um, you are ready to commit to the highest highest standards in every field and I think it's the driving force behind my success it has helped me accomplish uh, anything I set my mind to yeah. and um, as Oprah says you know passion is energy feel the power that comes from focusing on what excites you so I think uh, just being super passionate about um, what I believe in and having a go-getter mindset has helped me in the long, long run. And as a leader on my team, I try to understand my team's superpowers and how do I nurture them further? How do I make sure that they feel motivated um, and energized and how they can tap into their superpowers to actually excel? Um, both professionally and personally. I think that's very important, as you just mentioned, understanding what is each member's superpower, what is their why, uh, what brings them to work, what excites them. Identifying a superpower is really important for finding that energy and enthusiasm for what you do. But ultimately, what I see it as is kind of as you articulated, you know, finding those things that you are uniquely qualified for or that you do so well or that you're very passionate about that you can parlay into success for other people, whether it's customers, whether it's colleagues or whether it's leadership. I always look for what are the problems, what are the challenges that my senior leadership is grappling with and how can I solve those problems and deliver outcomes as a result of that? And that has really become the personification of my brand here. Um, you know, I've taken challenges that our senior leadership has had, you know, whether it was lack of relationships that we had within our customer organizations and different lines of business, or even like the ability to go out and recruit uh, effectively for, you know, in certain markets and things of that nature. And, um, you know, I've solved those through some of the resources that I have readily available. There was a lot of strategic thinking that went into it, but uh, being able to create that and replicate that I try to do the same thing with my team. Figure out what are you super passionate about? What are you great at? And how do we not only find success for you through that, but how can you create the blueprint for success for others based on the success that you've had? That's how we optimize impact. And that's why I think superpowers are so important is to really determine what they are. But you know, we've been talking about leaders today. Figuring out your team's superpowers is so crucial to doing everything that we talked about today, empowering them to do their best work, enabling them to succeed, and then building a thriving culture. Because if you have a team of people that are attuned to what their unique superpowers are, they're working together to complement each other's superpowers, and they're replicating that ability broadly, you're going to achieve everything you want. So. Yeah. This has been amazing as I expected. Radhika, anything else before we sign off that you'd like to hit on? I always like to leave with um, one, um, I would say, learning lesson or key takeaway 
today I would like to talk about career development for folks who are thinking about their career um, because this has really helped me be bold, be willing to take risks, be boundless and be what's next. And what I mean by that is reflect on where you are today and chart your own journey. Nobody else is going to do it for you. So if you're not getting a seat at the table, build your own table, but be fearless, embrace change and find the next best role for you and march forward to achieve it. And Carcel, as you said in one of your episodes, your network is your net worth. Keep building on that, keep expanding that because your network will help you probably land that next role. So I'll just leave you with this key takeaway. Uh, if it helps anyone out there, I I love to share my thoughts and perspectives. I wish I could stand and applaud right now. This is beautifully <laughs> said, Radhika. And um, one of the things that I learned from you the first time we chatted was to never go after anything or to create a plan or to create a roadmap for something where you don't have a tangible, trackable way to yes. measure outcomes and success. And um, I've taken that to heart. Um, I think as you look for a role or whatever you do, you know, we live in a world today where it's it's actually very freeing to know that the next role you do may not even exist today. Yes. And so yes. a lot of this comes down to relationships that you're able to create and the brand that personifies what you bring to the table. Those two things are very impactful and important. And you can go far if you're attuned to your superpower, the relationships that you need, you gravitate toward leadership. Like you said, you find a culture and, and leaders that you want to work in and work for, and the rest takes care of itself. Absolutely. Um, but this has been a pleasure as always. I hope you have a wonderful uh, week and holiday time uh, with your family. And until we see each other again, thanks so much. Thank you, Carson. It is always a delight and honor coming and talking to you. Look forward to our next connect. Likewise. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thanks so much. Take care.